Howdy, folks. In today's Wrath of Math lesson, we'll be talking about distance between vertices in graph theory. We'll also go over some related terms like the diameter of a graph and geodisks. You might notice I'm dressed a little bit weird today, kind of dressed like someone who is cold. It is a cold day today. I hope you're having a good day. I'm having a good day. Today I passed my second actuarial exam, so I'm just in a jovial mood. Uh, but enough about that. Let's get into this jolly holiday lesson. We'll begin with a graph. We're talking about distance between vertices. Let's, uh, let's draw a graph so we can use it as demonstration. Say it's got a vertex like that, an edge like that, and another vertex like that. Let's go ahead and give this graph an odd cycle because odd cycles are cool. Then we'll give it another edge and vertex there, say another edge and vertex there. And for the sake of this demonstration, let's give it one more edge and vertex there and another edge there. We'll go ahead and label these vertices V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6, and V7. Hopefully you can read all those. All right. And let me switch the color to purple. Okay. Now let's say, let's say we want to know the distance between V1 and let's say V4. How would you go about defining the distance between two vertices in a graph? Before you know the actual definition, how would you define it? If you think about it for a minute, you know, obviously we want it to have something to do with how long it takes to get from one vertex to another. I bet you'd come up with a definition very similar, if not exactly the same, to the definition that we'll see is actually used. Go ahead and think about it for a minute. You know, pause the video, whatever. Now, uh, assuming you've done that, let's go ahead and talk about what it actually is. So we write it like this. Use a D for distance, very intuitive. Distance between the vertices V1 and V4. In an undirected graph, which is what we're talking about, uh, the order you write these vertices in doesn't matter. The distance is the same. This is all you have to write if the graph you're working with is clear, but if you're working with multiple graphs at the same time, you might want to specify the distance, you know, which graph you're talking about. So for example, if we called this graph G, we could be more clear by writing G in the subscript of D to say we're talking about the distance between V1 and V4 in the graph G, as opposed to the distance between V1 and V4 in some other graph that we might be constructing. So just keep that in mind. If you're working with multiple graphs and you're talking about the distance between vertices, you can put the graph that you, that you mean in the subscript. So that's nice. Now what's the distance between V1 and V4? Well, we see we can get from V1 to V4 like this. This is a way to do it. We could go from V1 to V7, and then we could go to V6, and then we could go to V4. There's a path connecting V1 to V4 that has length three. Is the distance 3? No, it is not. The reason the distance between V1 and V4 isn't 3 is because that's not the shortest path, or that's not a length of the shortest path to get from one vertex to the other. Check this out. You, you might already see it. We could go from V1 to V2, and then from V2 to V4. That is a shortest path in the graph from V1 to V4. Similarly, when we went to V7 originally, we could have gone straight to V4 after that. So, because uh, 3, that's not the shortest number of edges it takes, that's not the smallest number of edges it takes to get from one vertex to the other, that's not the distance. The distance between two vertices is the length of a shortest path that connects them. Notice I say a shortest path because they're not necessarily unique. Here we see there are two paths, this one, and this one that have length two going from V1 to V4. It takes two edges to get from V1 to V4. There's no way to get from V1 to V4 in less than two edges. There's no path connecting them with length one, so their distance is two. Again, that is the length of a shortest path that connects V1 and V4. That is their distance. So, one other thing I should mention, this path, if I just write this out, we'll say P, a path going from V1 to V2 to V4, V1, then V2, then V4, we call a path like this a geodisc. In particular, it is a 
V1, V4 geodisc. A geodisc between two vertices is a path of shortest length that connects them. So since P is a geodisc, we know that the length of P is the distance between V1 and V4. So the distance between two vertices is the length of a shortest path that connects them. A geodisc uh, between two vertices is a shortest path that connects them. So the, these concepts, they're really handy. We use them a lot in uh, some of the proofs we'll do going forward. They'll come up a lot. The distance, should mention this, the distance between a vertex to itself, we'll just say the distance from V to V, just uh, keeping things general, not actually talking about vertices in this graph, is equal to zero because there is a trivial path of length zero going from V to V. Also, if we're in a, if we take two vertices that aren't connected, say we add another vertex to this graph, switch back to black, say we put a vertex V8 right over here, there is no path connecting V5 to V8. So the distance from V5 to V8 is undefined. The distance between two vertices is only defined if there is a path connecting them. In this case, getting rid of V8, we have a connected graph, so there will be a distance between any two vertices because there exists a path connecting any two vertices. Now to practice your understanding of the distance between two vertices in graphs, I recommend uh, writing out the distance between every pair of vertices in this graph. Pause the video or do it after the video and give that a shot. I'm not going to go through that in this video, that would take a while, it'd be kind of boring. Practice it yourself and uh, what I want to mention is what you'll find if you do that is that the greatest distance between any two vertices in this particular graph happens to be three. So two vertices that have that distance are V1 and V3. Okay, the distance in G, if we want to put that subscript there, the distance from V1 to V3, which again I'll emphasize, since this is an undirected graph, that's the same as the distance from V3 to V1, is equal to three. We see we're able to get from V1 to V3 in three edges. We could do something like this, go to V7, then to V4, and then to V3. There's no way to get from V1 to V3 in less than three edges. So this path from V1 to V7 uh, to V4 to V3 is a V1, V3 geodisc. It is a shortest path connecting the vertices, so its length is the distance between those vertices. The greatest distance between any two vertices in a graph is called the diameter of the graph. So we could write that diam for diameter, sorry about that loud train out there, the diameter of G is equal to three. Again, the diameter of a graph is the greatest distance between any two vertices in the graph. The distance between any two vertices is the length of a shortest path that connects the vertices, and a path connecting two vertices of shortest length is a geodisc between those two vertices. And uh, we'll talk more about uh, distance and actually drawing graphs, sort of using the distance between vertices to influence how you draw a graph, which I think is really cool. We'll talk about that in another, in another lesson. Uh, for now, we'll stop here, and I really hope this video helped you understand distance between vertices and graphs, as well as some related terms. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. I'm gonna go back to enjoying my hot chocolate.